Hello, my name is Ariella Wagner. I'm the founder of Sunray Construction Solutions, a national preliminary notice service and software company. Today, we have a fabulous webinar conducted by Russell O'Rourke, who is an incredible construction attorney with over 30 years of experience helping subcontractors, suppliers, and general contractors. Today, he is conducting a webinar on avoiding the five things that can kill your Ohio mechanics lien. So without further ado, I introduce Russell. Thank you, Ariella. Uh, boy, what a, a fabulous introduction. Uh, I didn't know so many good things about myself. Um, let's get right down to it. Uh, there's some instructions for you. Those of you who have been here before know already, but you can use your GoToWebinar chat box at the right to ask questions, and we'll ask questions at the end. Um, there's always the fine print with lawyers. I'm a lawyer. So uh, the, the primary thing that's important here is when you have any issues, what you're hearing today applies to a lot of different cases. However, because mechanics liens and construction in general are so highly litigated, lawsuits are filed all the time, courts of appeals respond to them, they, they become very fact sensitive. So you can't necessarily just take one issue and apply it to the world. So when you're looking at doing notices of furnishing, using a service like Sunray is the perfect idea. If you just wanna have a good answer, talk to your construction law attorney. Don't talk to your cousin, Phil, the personal injury attorney, because Phil isn't gonna know all the ins and outs of all the new cases that come down. So please do that right. Talk to a construction law attorney to get good answers. So let's just start off. The number one thing that subcontractors and suppliers don't do right in Ohio is identify, find, however you want to say it, the notice of commencement. The notice of commencement is a document that tells you all the secrets that you'll ever need to know about filing a mechanics lien. They tell you what the name of the project is, at least what the, uh, the owner is calling it. They tell you who the owner's designee is. The owner's designee becomes very important in just a few slides. They describe the project. They give you the legal description. You're gonna need the legal description when you're getting ready to file a mechanics lien. Oh, just as a side note, we are really talking about private construction projects today. We're not talking about federal or state and local projects. That's a whole different set of rules. So anyway, uh, it, it really hits every button you need if you want to file a mechanics lien and in some circumstances, if you're doing residential work, and sometimes there is a, a notice of commencement filed on a residential project, we'll talk about that one as we get a little further on too, uh, but sometimes you wanna be able to give notice to the bank that you haven't been paid. That can be real important. So you want to see that notice of commencement because all these things, including the name of the lender, are listed. I see these things go on all the time. People just, they mess it up. And the way to get it done right is to start with the basics. Now, sometimes the basics are very difficult because you just can't find that notice of commencement. The law is that the owner must file a notice of commencement. And once the owner files a notice of commencement, then your obligation becomes to serve a notice of furnishing. Now, what does that mean? Well, first of all, you have to figure out if the, the owner filed a notice of commencement. You have to do a lot of searching. And that's really one of the problems with this whole rigmarole of how you're going to serve your notice of furnishing because you have to see the notice of commencement. How do you see the notice of commencement? You find it online in some of the counties. Some of the counties won't show you. Some you have to do some guessing. And if you do a lot of notices of furnishing or you're a service that does a lot of notices of furnishing, you get notices of commencement. So when the order comes in, they say, oh yeah, that's the ABC project and you go right to it, even if you can't otherwise find it online. And the courts have been really pretty bad 
about extending the rights of an owner, even if they mess up their notice of furnishing a little bit, uh, notice of commencement a little bit. So sometimes it makes it awfully difficult to find because one of the ways they're listed is through the owner. But if you're a sub or a supplier, you may not even know who the owner is. So that is very important. Once you determine that a notice of commencement is filed to have mechanics lien rights, you must serve a notice of furnishing. Now, who do you serve the notice of furnishing upon? Well, the primary issue is going to be, it depends on who you are. If you are a first tier subcontractor or first tier supplier, and by that I mean somebody who is in contract with, here we'll call it the general contractor, under the statute it's really called the original contractor, the contractor or contractors that have a contract directly with the owner. That's the one that you need to get. You will have to serve, if you're in contract with the contractor, have to serve your notice of furnishing only on the owner. Does that mean you shouldn't serve it on the contractor? No, I go ahead and serve them on a contractor anyway. It, it, all it costs is postage. So you might as well do it because it makes you look professional. It makes you look like uh, you know what you're doing. And it also tells the contractor, these people are, this subcontractor, this supplier is one who's going to get paid because at some point, the owner is gonna ask me for a, note, uh, a um, lien waiver from them. The whole point of doing this notice of furnishing is to tell the owner, and if you're not in direct contract with the contractor, the contractor, that you're working on the job, that you're supplying materials to this job. Why? So they can ask for a lien waiver from you to assure that you have been paid to avoid having a mechanics lien. Now, when this law first passed, I've been doing mechanics lien since 1987. When this law first passed in 1991, I said, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to get a whole new job because they're, all the mechanics liens are gonna go away because it turned out, out to be the Russell O'Rourke Full Employment Act because they're so hard to do right. Everything here is hard to do right. What if you don't know if there's a notice of commencement? What if you just can't find it at all? Do you have to serve a notice of furnishing? Well, the answer is yeah, maybe. And the maybe is, if there was one there, you had to. If there wasn't one there, you didn't have to. Should I serve a notice of furnishing anyway? Heck yeah. Why would you serve a notice of furnishing if there was no notice of commencement? Because you wanna get on that payment list. You want the owner to be asking the contractor, where's that lien waiver from ABC Supply? I paid you last month for ABC. I need to know that they got paid. So do a notice of furnishing regardless, and you'll get paid faster. Now, when do you need to serve this notice of furnishing? You need to serve it within 21 days of your first day of work on the job if you want full lien rights. And the person you're gonna serve it on uh, is going to be, again, variable depending upon who you are. The the issue really it becomes, again, if you're a first tier sub or supplier, you only have to serve it on the owner. If you're a sub sub or a supplier to a sub, then you have to serve it on both the owner and the original contractor. The reason you do that is letting the contractor know that you're working on the job. If you're that first tier, you don't have to tell the contractor, hey, I have a contract with you because kind of by definition, they already know it. So that's, that's the reason you wanna do that. That's the reason the law makes you do it. What happens if you miss that 21 days? Now, again, it depends. If all you were doing is you had one load of material or all of your material was served on day one and you served your notice of furnishing on day 22, you lost all your lien rights. If you're working on the job or delivering materials to the job over a long period of time and you did it on day 22 or day 50 or day 100, all you did was end up losing 
all the lien rights before 21 days before you served the notice of furnishing. So if you, you had your notice of furnishing served on day 100, you lost day one through 79. How bad is that? Well, it depends. Uh, the, the worst part is if you're not being paid at all, then it's bad. If you are being paid, it's kind of self-curing because you're getting paid and you're eating away at those days that you didn't have covered. Now, there was a case back in 2010, which really screwed up life. It's this Halsey versus Isbell case. And to make a very long story short, uh, Halsey served its notice of furnishing on May 13th. And service of a notice of furnishing is by mail. As soon as you drop it in the mail to the address in the notice of commencement, it's deemed to be served. They did it that way. They delivered their material the next day. Isbell got the notice of furnishing the following day. The court here applied crazy law that didn't have anything to do with the issue at all and came up saying by reading half of the sentence in the statute that you can't serve your notice of furnishing until after the first work that you do on the job. Well, fortunately, another case came up recently, this uh, Pursuit Commercial Door case. And I was lucky enough, I, I belong to uh, the American Subcontractors Association and I write amicus briefs for them. I was lucky enough to be able to write the amicus brief, friend of the court brief, uh, to help persuade them to reverse the Isbell, Halsey v. Isbell ruling. And they did because they could actually read the whole sentence that says at any time, after the filing of the notice of commencement, but within 21 days after the first work. So it, they read it right. The Halsey court didn't read it right. So you can serve them early. The only problem with serving them early is how well did you guess? You know, I have a number of uh, elevator clients that, uh, that have me do notices. And when they do that, they, as soon as they get the contract, they want the notice done. Under Halsey, that would have been bad because they're not gonna do the work. You know, If they got the contract on January 2nd, they're gonna wanna have the notice sent out that week, but they're not gonna install the, con the um, elevator until August. But you can put in the notice, the first work will be performed on August 1st. The problem with that is what if you worked early? If you worked early, you need to have a new notice of furnishing go out to cover all of your lien rights. So that's really the only gap you have right now. Uh, again, how do you serve it? You can serve it by sheriff service. You can have it delivered with a written receipt and that means personal delivery. It does not mean fax. It does not mean email or you can serve it by certified mail. Uh, by this, this written receipt too, you can send it to FedEx if you want. But certified mail, the, the statute loves certified mail. What it wants you to do, send it out certified mail, it's deemed to, be de deemed to be served on the day you mail it. Everything else is on the day of receipt. So if, you, if your last day, if your 21st day is today, you can send it by certified mail and it get to them in a few days, or you can overnight it by FedEx and they'll get it tomorrow. Send it by certified mail, you have full lien rights. Send it by FedEx, you don't, you blew it. So that's really gonna be the way you wanna do it almost every time. Oh, the one other thing I forgot, I'm sorry, is when you're, if there is a, a person identified as the, owner's designee on the notice of commencement, you must serve the owner's designee. By serving the company, if you just serve the owner and it happened to get to the owner's designee, that's a proof problem. Uh, if the owner's designee is, is identified, put them on the list. You can send it to the owner too if you want, 
and I kind of recommend you do that, but I absolutely require that you are going to look at that notice of commencement and send it to the owner's designee, because otherwise I know I'm gonna get the complaint from the, um, the owner's lawyer saying, send me a copy of the certified mail receipt showing that you served the owner's designee. No, okay, your lien rights are void. Please remove your lien now. I, I have that case right now. So that's a problem for my client. Let's talk about residential construction projects for just a moment. If you're doing work on residential projects, there's no notice of furnishing, or maybe there is notice of furnishing. And I'm sorry to say it like that. There are home construction contracts and there's home purchase contracts. In the home purchase contract, it is when you are purchasing a home from the builder. So in that circumstance, there is a, um, there should be, there is a uh, notice of commencement and a notice of furnishing that is required. Uh, this slide should say yes on home purchase contracts. Uh, notice of furnishing on home construction contracts. Home construction contracts tend to be more, you're getting a deck put on or you're doing something like that, that's small, a new roof or you know individual type things. It could be uh, different if you wanted to hire a builder to build a home for you on your property and you pay them their draws along the way, that could actually be a home construction contract and have no notice of commencement. If you are a subcontractor here, a supplier here, still look for a notice of commencement. You don't know what the deal is on this property. Now, the statute was also changed a little bit because banks got kind of irritable about uh, when the uh, matter of priority is, whether they were first or whether a, uh, a lien claimant was first. So banks are permitted to file notices of commencement, even if no notice of commencement is required. If you think that no notice of commencement is required, should you still serve a notice of furnishing? Absolutely, because you're not sure. You, you really don't know what the individual pieces of this are. And if there's a notice of commencement out there, absolutely serve your notice of furnishing. It doesn't cost you that much and it protects you. Not only does it protect you against not getting paid, it also expedites the opportunity for you to get paid because people don't want liens. On When you're doing a lien waiver, and you should be signing lien waivers all the time. There's really two. This isn't a lien waiver program, but I'll just mention there's a conditional lien waiver and you can tell those, do not read the top. Do not read the title of the lien waiver to find out what it means. Read the first sentence usually. It will say something like, uh, if it's unconditional, um, the undersigned hereby waives all liens, claims, rights and liens, right to claim, choses in action, all these things in consideration of $20,000. A conditional one says upon the receipt of a check in the amount of $20,000 and when that check clears the bank on which it's drawn, this shall act as a good and sufficient lien waiver. Now, do owners want that? No, they don't want it because it's not self-proving. But the way it ought to go is on your first payment, you should sign a, an, a conditional waiver if you haven't gotten the check yet. Anytime you don't have the payment in your hand or you don't trust it, sign the conditional one. After the check clears, so perhaps at next month's draw, the first month you give them a conditional. Next month you give them a con conditional for the check you haven't gotten yet and an unconditional for the one that you already have gotten. Now, what about, uh, what are you waiving here? Uh, one of the problems with lien waivers is they waive everything. Liens, okay, claims, wait a minute, was there a change order? That's a claim. What they should be saying is bond claims. Uh, 
and all those things. So you want to narrow it down. So you're just waiving lien rights. If there's a bond on the project, you can also waive bond rights. Through what date? It usually says uh, through the date hereof, but you're not being paid through the date hereof. You're being paid, particularly if you're on a commercial project, you know, you have your draw in by the 25th of the month and you're gonna get paid if everything goes perfectly in the 30th of next month, or maybe in Ohio because there's a prompt pay law, they have 10 extra days. So it could be the 10th, two months later. So when you sign your lien waiver on, you know, 40 days after the work that you have in, you've just waived your lien rights, not from January 1st through January 31st, you've waived them from January 1st through uh, March 10th, okay, March 12th. Uh, so you can change that and put on the specific date that you have that you want to waive your lien rights for. Is it preserving retainage? I waive all my lien rights for the period from January 1st through 31st. Well, but you had 10% retainage withheld. So did you just waive your lien rights? Boy, I sure would want another sentence in there that says not including lien rights. What if they send you a paid in full check? Ohio has a statute that if they send you a check that says paid in full on the check or in the accompanying uh, documentation, it says paid in full and you cash it, except in very few circumstances, that's gonna be paid in full if you had any dispute on the project. And there's always a dispute on the project. So be very careful if you see a paid in full check. Uh, before you file your lien, you really wanna do, and it's not required in Ohio, it's required in a bunch of states. What you really like to do is have a notice of intent to lien sent out. And that tells everybody that you haven't been paid, that you know your clock is ticking, and that if you're not paid, you already have a lawyer lined up, you've got this ready to go, and you're going to file a mechanics lien. Now, what are the deadlines for filing a mechanics lien? If you're working on a residential project, it's 60 days, that's one or two family or a single unit of a uh, residential condominium. Remember though, that homeowners have a paid in full defense whether it's on a home construction project or a home purchase uh, project, they have a paid in full defense. And what if they haven't paid in full, they paid everything but the last $10,000 and there's $50,000 worth of liens. Well, everybody's going to get their pro rata share of whatever's left. The homeowner is not gonna have to pay twice. We're not talking about oil and gas wells here today, but just for giggles, it's 120 days from your last work on the project. Uh, 75 days for all other projects that are private and 120 days for state and local projects. There are no mechanics liens on a federal project. It's a whole different system. The contents of your mechanics lien are vital. They have to be on the edge of perfect. We have a statute in Ohio that says the laws of this uh, are to be liberally construed. Well, that's all well and good, except there's case law that says that mechanics liens are in, this is out of the, out of the case, in derivation of common law, and so should be strictly construed. So under the statute, we liberally construe them, comma, right after we strictly construe them. How's that for it? Uh, so what are the who things? The who is, who are you? Who did you work for? And who owns the property? Who owns the project? Now that can be an owner, a part owner, or a lessee. You know, it, it, you could be working in a shopping mall and the build out is being done by the tenant. So be careful because if there's, if you didn't find the notice of commencement, you don't know whose project that is. What did you supply? This can be general. You, you don't have to say, that you supplied a specific type of shingle, you just can say roofing materials, that's plenty. Or you can say uh, you did the drywall or the electrical or anything you wanna say just so they have an idea of what you did on the project. When? They wanna know the first date of work you had on that project, actually physically on the project, and the last date you had physically on the project. Now, 
that last date's a tricky one because the last date is the last date you did, and I'll call it real work. So work in completing the project. A punch list. No. Was it completion punch list or was it corrective punch list? You didn't paint this wall well enough. I can still see the drywall through it. That's corrective. Going back out will not revive your lien rights. You forgot to paint room 101. Go on out, paint room 101. Now you have new lien rights. That's a little iffy in Southern Ohio because the courts down there tend to uh, say that you need significant work. So maybe painting one room, there were 10 would be significant. But if you were painting an entire skyscraper, one room probably is insignificant. In the Northern half of Ohio, it works. It's just the courts of appeals. Uh, where? You have to tell them where this project is and the where comes from the legal description. How do you find the legal description? It's in the notice of commencement. What if there's no notice of commencement? You have to do a title search and find the correct uh, mechanics, uh, the, the correct deed that will give you the, um, uh, the legal description. Now, what if it's a big project? I don't know if any of you work in Cleveland, but there's always a lot of work going on down at Cleveland Clinic. Boy, are there a lot of legal descriptions for the Cleveland Clinic. There's a lot of different notices of commencement for the, league, for the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, once I asked the title, when I first started doing this piece of it, I asked the title company to get me all the notices of commencement. I need a notice of commencement for the fourth floor cath lab at the cryo, uh, cryo building at the Cleveland Clinic. And they said, sorry, we don't do that. There's just too much risk because there's so many. Okay, the hospitals here in Cleveland, it gets to be that way. But on almost everything else, it's more easy to find. Sometimes it's difficult in shopping malls, but you don't worry about that. Usually you can pick them up. How much you want your amount due. If you are a subcontractor and supplier, you cannot include interest. You have to remember, if you didn't earn your entire contract amount, you can't lien for your entire contract amount. Now, some owners will come back and say, well, you're not due retainage yet. So you can't bill for, you can't lien for retainage. Eh, wrong. You can lien for retainage because while it may not be, uh, while it is due, it's always due, it's just not payable yet. So lien for retainage, generally not lien for um, interest, and be sure you don't overlean it. I have a contractor right now that we're getting on the edge of perhaps defending in criminal court. This is the first one I've ever seen like this because they filed a mechanics lien and they filed it for the full balance of their contract, not for the work that was completed. And you know, work completed, maybe some uh, pro lost profit and things like that. They can probably stick that in too, but they went to a detective who took it to the prosecutor. And now the prosecutor is talking to our client about this felony theft claim that they're going after. Now, if you're a little off, that's okay. There's actually some good court of appeals cases that say, you know, if it's in the area, there was one that was 10% off. And it was only because there was a dispute between the parties the lien claimant filed for the, uh, the entire balance and they just hadn't figured out this last $1,400. It was a small contract. Uh, so if you're a little off, that's where you get in the liberal concept of our statute. The other stuff is all strict. So be sure you have everything else right. The how much, as long as it's not crazy how much off, you're good to go. Uh, you have to serve it. One of the statutes, when people do their own mechanics liens, one of the things they always miss is 1311.07. 1311.06, that's the Ohio Revised Code, is the one that says that you have to file the mechanics lien. 1311.07 is the one that says, oh, by the way, and you have to send it to the owner within 30 days after you file it. How can you get it there? You can get it there by sheriff service. I've never done that. 
certified mail, delivery with written receipt. Sometimes I'll send them by FedEx, usually because when I do a mechanics lien, I send my certified mail out the same day. I have it covered because I've got my 30 days. We always keep following it to make sure we get it. We're looking for that green card to come back all the time. If we're not getting it back halfway through the month, we'll serve it again and we'll serve it by FedEx. If they still haven't gotten it, once the 30 days is about to expire, there's a safety valve that says if you essentially, if you've tried and you can't get it served, then you can post it on the property and you post it in some conspicuous spot on the property. Now, to post it, you're not gonna take a big old nail and pound it in the front door, but a nice piece of tape on the front door would do. Uh, remember that homeowner's defense of paid in full, never forget that, so the answer is file early and often. Lenders also have defense too, which is the one reason may, that you may wanna send a not notice of furnishing, notice of amount due to them, which is why you want to see the notice of commencement. You can also look for a construction mortgage on a house. Uh, to enforce the lien, you have six years to enforce a lien. Now, they may send you a notice to commence suit. You have to file a suit. If your contract said arbitration, you still have to file the suit. You can then stay the, the uh, the lawsuit if you want to go to arbitration and take it through the foreclosure process. Um, you can also, you don't, if you don't file, if they gave you that notice to commence suit, it's you have to file suit within 60 days. If you miss that, the only thing you lost is your lien right. You still have your contract claim. So if you get one of those, as soon as you get a notice to commence suit, contact your lawyer. Don't put it on your desk and say, okay, I'll deal with that a little later because it's a little complex and there's a lot of things that you have to do to file a foreclosure. Talk to your lawyer about whether you really ought to. You know, you're gonna file a me uh, mechanics lien foreclosure on a $6,000 lien. No, you're gonna have too many expenses. The filing fee is expensive and you have to have a preliminary judicial, which is also several hundred dollars. So you eat away at a whole lot of your potential recovery. Unless the, the contractor you sold to or the owner you sold to is insolvent, at that point, you may just want to forget it and file a contract claim. Talk about that with your attorney, though, to make a reasonable decision that is you know, a good business decision. Okay, your steps to getting paid in full and on time. Find that NOC, serve your NOF, notice of furnishing. If there's a notice, if there's an owner's designee, be sure you hit them. Be sure you get the owner, the contractor, uh, everybody above you in the chain, you can send it to. It puts everybody on notice. Now, uh, it also says that you can serve the bank. I wouldn't serve the bank, at least not right up front, because bank get a notice of furnishing, they start to say, oops, is there a problem with this project? Let's stop paying out and let's figure out how this works. Be careful, careful, careful with lien waivers. You know, if if you have a problem with a lien waiver, you can contact Sunray, you can contact me, and we'll walk you through it so you get the right one done. Consider using a notice of intent to lien. It's not required in Ohio, but it can get you on the payment track right away. File your mechanics lien on time. Be sure you serve the contracting party. That would be the project owner. It's called contracting party in the statute, but it's the project owner, so it could be the lessee. And then get paid and release your lien. So that's really where we wanna go with that. Now, uh, Ariella, do you have a few things to say here? Thank you so much. Yes, we just have a few more slides and our presentation will conclude. But yes, Sunray has an extraordinary robust system that you can request your notices online. Um, would you please go to the next screen? In less than 60 seconds, you can request a notice of furnishing uh, for any of your projects. It takes, all you have to enter in is where you're working, who you're working for. Um, if you have the general contractor's information, if you're not working directly for the general contractor, that is extremely helpful. But Sunray does do that research for you. And let's go to the next slide. 
reminders. Uh, one of the most important parts of the entire process is sending um, your, in the event that you are not paid, leaning the project, and we will eventually have another webinar on, clean, on claims on bonds, but you certainly do not want to go do all this work, send out the notices of furnishing, and then lose your lien rights because you don't have your reminders in place. Sunray's Reminders are incredible. Not only do you receive an email reminder from our system, you can also add this to your Google calendars or your Outlook. And let's go to the last uh, slide there with free waivers. And as Russell was explaining, your waivers and releases, all the statutory forms are inside of the Sunray application. So you can select the document you need the legal description will be pulled from your notices to, uh, of furnishing, and you can make sure you select the right notice for, pardon me, the right waiver and release for um, the project. As he mentioned before, how crucial it is to have the correct through dates, the conditional versus unconditional, and all of those can be done for free in uh, the Sunray application. So, and we'll go to the final slide, which, um, if we have any questions, and I know so far we have one question from uh, one of Sunray's customers, and uh, the question has, there are actually three questions, and Russell, I'll answer a few of them, but I think that you're, you're going to be best to answer um, the last question here. So it says, Sunray asks for the NOC at the time of sending an NTO. Does Sunray follow up on the request that the NOC is not received? does not receiving the NOC affect our rights as material suppliers. So the first part of it, yes, we, we do request it, but it is not required. Um, we do research to see if the notice of commencement has in fact been recorded. Um, as he said in the very beginning of the presentation that not all projects really have the general contractors to not file or record those notice of commencements. Um, and sometimes they don't even file them really timely. So what we do at Sunray to make sure that we preserve lien rights is not only do we send the notice of furnishing, we send the notice of furnishing with a request for a notice of commencement by certified mail. Now, I would like for Russell to answer the legal questions because there are times, again, where there is no notice of commencement filed. And if there is no notice of commencement filed or if the notice of commencement is filed at a later date and we requested the notice of furnishing, how you still have lien rights. So go ahead, Russell. <clears throat> Excuse me, thank you. The, if there's no notice of commencement filed, you don't have to do anything. As I say, you still should, but you don't have to serve a notice of furnishing if there is no notice of commencement. If there is a late filed notice of commencement and you have already sent out your notice of furnishing that has, as Ariella said, that ongoing request for the notice of commencement, they have 10 days to get it to you from the day it's filed or if it's already filed, uh, let's say it that way. If you send out your notice of furnishing, along with the notice of request for notice of commencement, they have 10 days to get the notice of furnish notice of commencement back to you. If they don't get it to you within those 10 days, your your clock on serving your notice of furnishing stops and doesn't start again until they get it back to you. In which event, you have another 21 days. If it's late filed, you have 21 days from the day they filed it to serve your notice of furnishing. But since you already have used this process and you have that ongoing request for the notice of commencement and they didn't send it to you, you don't have to worry about it because not until they send it to you, do you have to send your notice of furnishing out. <clears throat> now, Ariel has said that they send their notice of furnishing out with the request for notice of commencement. Some people will say, well, why don't I send a notice of commencement out first, request for notice of commencement out first, so I don't have to send uh, two certified mails out? Well, but you do. So what's better is if you send it out, you do your best guess. And, you know, even if you have it in your hand, you have the notice of commencement in your hand, excuse me, hand, 
you still want to send them a request for a copy of the notice of commencement because there's a little quirk in the statute that says if they sent it to you, if they served it on you, which is what they have to do, then if there's any problem, if there's any error in the notice of commencement and you file a mechanics lien, you have the entire life of the mechanics lien to fix the problem. So they have the wrong legal description on it. Well, if you just found it online and used it, that's not as good, yet they had to send it to you. So always do that, even if you have it in your hand, always send out a request for notice of commencement too. If there's a late filed mechanic uh, notice of commencement <clears throat> and you worked before it, you don't have to worry. You worked after it, you don't have to worry because you're only on one side. If you worked on both sides of it, you actually are in a kind of interesting situation because you have priority for the time before the notice of commencement was filed over every other mechanics lien claimant for the work you did before it was filed. And then you're with everybody else priority wise for everything after it was filed. I think that was a long answer to a short question. Did I hit all of them, Ariella? I think you did. Um, okay. And I right now it doesn't appear that we have any other questions so i think we'll go to our last slide with all of our contact information and um go to that next slide okay um we do have actually some some additional webinars but uh one for california so if anyone is in the state of working in the state of california that's on october 30th and then on october 31st we have a webinar all on waivers and releases for um, the state of Florida. And actually our final, final slide is where you can contact us if you have any questions um, and you are nervous to ask something or the webinar is uh, finished and you go, oh my goodness, I forgot to ask this. We are here for any questions that you may have. So you could contact Russell or of course you can contact me Russell, you did such a sensational job. Thank you so very much. And uh, I wish everyone a sunny day. Well, thank you, Ariella. Uh, one last thing I'll say is if you do want to contact me, you know, lawyers charge for their time. I, I'm not going to charge you. Have any question about anything we talked about today or you missed today? Just, you know, feel free to call me. I'm not going to charge you for that. So we'll just, we'll help you through whatever it is. Wonderful. Thank you again, Russell. A brilliant, brilliant job and have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you all.